Madam? What's on your mind or heart I need to know about? And understand, you know, I don't have all my chronology, so the questions I may ask, you know, may be a little bit different than what probably should be asked at this point in time. But I'll ask her, does the court want me to swear in? Yeah, we'll swear in. Madam, could you raise your right hand, please? Do you solemnly swear or affirm the information you'll give me in the matter now in hearing? She'll be the truth, the whole truth, and none but truth. Have you got yourself affirm? Yes. Okay, you can put your hand down. Your Honor, may I please refer to her as juror number 64? You certainly may. Or juror number 64, um, you've heard the um, recitation from the court as to what occurred in this matter that causes you to be here today. Is there something that you would like to explain to the court as to why you didn't show and what were the circumstances surrounding your non-appearance? Uh, yes. First, like receiving the jury summons. I don't yeah, speak up if you wouldn't mind. Actually, just receiving the jury summons. Um, I travel a lot. I've always traveled a lot I'm for, globally for work and other things. But I traveled. I, I wasn't here Thanksgiving week, the week of the 28th. So, and I don't think I returned until like the 16th. That was in the UK. And because I live with my grandmother, uh, I didn't go because I was exposed to travel, didn't want to make her sick. So I don't think I actually saw the summons until like the 30th. And it, and the 30th of December? Yes. Okay, all right. Yeah, from, from travel and just abstaining from the household to not make her When did sick. you book your travel for the Dominican Republic? So that was also a business trip from a partnership, and that travel was, I know, I, I think it was booked like the 29th, but it's been on my calendar of since December? the 1st. I didn't book it. The admin booked it for, for, the, for that particular. Thing. Hold on a minute. Yeah, I'm, I have a document that may assist the court with that information, if I could present that to the court. <laughs> Absolutely. All right. And that trip hold, was Hold on okay. a minute. And I'll hand these up to the court. Are they part of uh, court one that uh, we gave you, Mr. Thomas? I don't think that th those are the booking booking information. I don't okay. think the court gave me the clerk gave me. The okay, book. that's fine. Okay, I'll, I'll mark it as. Uh... Let's see. Well, this would be R one respondents one. So. I'll mark, it's a six-page document. It starts out with uh, Gotcha's Breakfast Bar and goes on, uh, and it has her booking uh, information. Uh, I'll, I'll, ad I'll admit it for consideration is R is R1, yes, sir. one, one, and um, it. Some of the information we do have already, Mr. Thomas, but it, but I will include that. So I'll admit it. All right, Jordan Six Four, you can continue explaining to the court. Yeah. And that day, like I said, I received the jury summons really late, so and I didn't really fit any of those four options listed, so I came. And then that, at that day, when you said it, I asked when we were checking out, because it was a long day, I asked, was there any exception to the process? Because it was Wednesday, and the hardship things were on Monday. So I asked, my trip started on Friday, and it was a business-related trip, and I asked, was there any exception? They said the best she could do was send an email with the details and explanation. And I also knew I had these medical appointments. I have five weeks of scheduled infusions for the next five weeks, starting the 20th upon my return. Uh, but they said send the email, and I did the first thing the next morning. I also called aggressively, trying to get through. And that voicemail that I called, I still, I checked yesterday. It still says, if you have an issue, send it with your, your jury summons, send an email, and you will not be penalized or something. So I sent that. I didn't really know I was in violation until uh, the sheriff showed up. And even then, he said, will you come back, show, come down. <coughs> so after after I realized it was a, such a, I had a warning that it was basically because family members started calling me from seeing the news or reading the paper or whatever. And I called back then. I couldn't leave. I would have immediately returned, but I was on a boat and I had no way to get off. So, Ms. Hayes, let me ask something. I mean, this is not your first jury service in Fulton County. Is that correct? No, and I've never, but it normally doesn't go like this. And I thought I was following directions. And, and that's part of the challenge I think you're facing is that um, because I've read through the documentation that you provided that's, uh, that's fairly contained within courts, um, the, the court exhibit I just gave. What's that number, Christina? 23. Course 23. And then why didn't you just apply for a medical, I mean, a medical waiver? And if, you, if, you, if your health condition, you could have done that, and that would have 
earlier and gone ahead and not not been in this particular position. But because the jury summons say you had to do it 10 days before I saw it really late. So you're saying that when you had your um, you didn't get your you because of your travel that it, your notice sat in your grandma's home and then I, I I'm I'm just uh, so I returned from the UK. I know around the 17th. I had a doctor's appointment on the 20th. I didn't go home. I usually don't go home until seven to 10 days if I've been exposed because my grandma's elderly and pandemic and all that good stuff. So I know I didn't see the uh, summons to after Christmas. I didn't go home home to after Christmas. So you didn't go home and that, and so your, your grandma's, you didn't look at your mail until that point in time? No, my mail was home. No. Say again? No, I didn't have my mail. Okay. Earlier from the clerk shows that I think the total amount of her trip, according to the document I have here, is about sixty nine hundred dollars. Yes, I'm I'm in I'm in possession of that. That that the to, that the total cost of her uh... Madam, when did you send in this documentation? Did you send it in prior? The same to... day. That immediately when I came on the on the on the, if it was Wednesday, I did it. We late, left here late Wednesday. I did it first thing. I'm, I'm sorry, morning. you're, you're... Uh, the on the fifth. You are you referring to the email? You you asking her about the email that she? Sent I'm her? asking her about when she sent her itinerary to jury services. Did immediately you? the next day, the fifth. Okay, then why not send it earlier? I mean, if if that if that were the case, I mean you I mean you obviously saw this is probably going to be a problem. So why not send it? send it to uh, jury services and put us on the ready even before because on the fourth theoretically i mean we could i mean we we do excuse people that have travel that is booked prior to their jury summons so i don't know if you'd fall in that particular category but we we do take a look at that i mean if you've got pre-planned travel that clearly was uh that was uh booked prior to your jury summons that is something that we could, we can consider, but um, yeah, honestly, Your Honor, I got have my mail was stacked. I did. I'm sorry, you have to speak up. I'm I said you. honestly, Your Honor, my mail was stacked. I went through and I saw it said if you had to do it within ten days, I believe it said. So my my thought was just to show up to not be. Uh, and I'll, every move I made is to not be negligent of the jury summons. So I showed up, but I didn't receive that summons. I know until like the thirtieth or something like that. Did you also make calls to jury management? Yes. Even when I was here that day and realized, uh, when I first saw it, they said, you, st you still have to wait to the end of the day, go through the process, we'll hear you then. As, through, as the day got longer, the process was changing. When I was leaving that day, they said, you don't, you know, the best thing you can do is just send an email. So if I saw it on the 30th, I would have sent the email. It still would have been getting to you like on the 2nd or 3rd when it was time for me to show up. Right. Madam, anything else? Well, well yeah, and I'm, and I'm thinking the court mentioned December 30th. That would have been a Saturday also because, you know, New Year's was on the 31st. I mean, New Year's was on, on Sunday, I believe, this year. So the 30th uh, would have been, well, been Friday. I believe it would have been Friday. So, uh, you know, I, I think she made good faith efforts. There, but I'll also indicate, according, I don't know how relevant that might be, not knowing all of your procedures, just getting involved in this matter, is that when I was outside this morning, outside your courtroom, I heard your jury management people out there telling people as they come up that your, the jury management voicemail or whatever it is that people call into changes every day. The message changes. Now, I don't know how that affects people's request. I don't know how relevant that might be to the court. It's, it's, it's not really relevant. But I, I'll tell you, and I'll, I'll, I'll fill you in on that, Mr. Thomas. That particular is relevant for people who are assessing what, how 
when they're supposed to report. So Ms. Von Kelsch tells that that letter instructs them saying, hey, call after five o'clock and then your juror number tells you, I mean, the message will tell, hey, jurors, you know, four, five, six, seven, I'm just making that up. You need to report X date and time in courtroom 1C or 1D. That's what it does. It does change daily, but we told the jurors reporting on, on, on the 4th, 5th, and 6th that they need to call that particular number. Now, I, call, I, I gave them also in-court notice when we were, uh, so I told them that, you know, I told your client that she would need to appear back on the 9th. So I did give in-court notice, and then Ms. Von Kelch changes the message so that that particular grouping so, for example, we're not finished with all the hardships at this point in time, so those particular individuals are calling that juror services number nightly to find out when they're going to have to come back to be examined. So that's how it changes. Numbers? Oh, numbers. One on the website and one on the letter? Yes, Your Honor. So there are two numbers. One is a general uh, okay. jury service line for regular traverse jurors and grand jurors. And Your Honor, may I ask the court is, as the court was giving a recitation of, of how uh, things occurred on the, the uh, voicemail for jury management, is there in fact a message, and of course I have to ask because I don't know, is there in fact a message that tells a potential juror that if they send in certain documents attached with whatever request they're making, they won't be penalized? Because that could be misleading. Now, I don't Ron know. Kelsch? No. It just tells them when to report. Um, I don't, need, oh, oh, oh. And that I don't know where time. I need the letter, so I called the number that's on the no, no, website. Yeah. But did, did you hear something about saying it's not the, penalized? It says, yes. Uh, according to her, she says there's something that on that voicemail that says if you do whatever you're being told to do, you won't be penalized. I just realized this moment there's two numbers because I don't know what I did with the letter, actually. I'm, I'm sorry. You, you're my, I, I don't know what I did with the letter, actually, because I was tired today and I started responding to you guys the next morning, so I went back to that initial jury page. And that's the number I've been calling. That's the number I got through on yesterday. So I, when I hear I just had an aha moment that there are two numbers. Okay, anything else you want to tell me, madam, or Mr. Thomas? No, Your Honor. Okay. Jury number 64, um, the reason I went through that whole admonition to all of your group at the very end of the day is because, and, uh, and you may have heard me you know, talk at the very beginning about the importance of jury service. We have a lot of people that we ask to serve. It doesn't make a difference what vocation or advocation you belong. Um, where you have, um, it is that important. Um, yeah. You know, it, it, it mirrors or is right up against that right, you know, your right to vote. So, um, when, you know, we take this very seriously in order, to, in order to get a lawful and a fair and a just jury as to both sides. So, you know, there are a lot of people that were inconvenienced. I mean, severely inconvenienced. Um, you're not the only person that outlaid money. We, I examined people yesterday who lost literally thousands, hundreds of thousands of dollars trying to be here, and uh, I had to make, I have to make decisions in regards to that. But I didn't even get a chance to examine you about your circumstance, because you went to, you know, you decided, you said, okay, I'm gonna go, and, and, um, and you didn't afford me the opportunity to do that. Now, certainly, I understand you can't be in two places at one time. So, um, Ordinarily, um, madam, I, you know, I do find you in contempt, but here's what I'm going to do. Contempt is punishable easily by a fine of $1,000 and or 20 days in jail. I am not going to fine you. I'm going to, well, first, madam, did you, go to, did you attend college? Yes. You have a four-year degree? Yes, Southern Tech, yeah. Say again? Yes, okay. yes. Okay, all right. What I then want to do is, in order for you to satisfy your contempt, I'm going to commute the 20 days and require you to write a 30-page paper on the importance of jury service. Here's the criteria. You have to do APA style. 
you're gonna have to use at least 10 primary sources, 10 secondary sources. Um, you'll talk in a minimum, and I'll write this in the order. Oh, okay. uh, you'll have an order, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, you'll have it before you leave here today. You're gonna write the, at a minimum, history, the history of jury service, who could not serve on a jury, because that's very important, because years ago, people that looked like us couldn't serve on juries. It was prohibited. I want you to talk about jury service in Georgia and discrimination at a minimum, those four things, okay? And you can talk about anything else you want to, um, in that regard. Uh, I am going to give you a date three weeks hence that that paper needs to be submitted to me electronically. Um, and we're gonna run it through a plagiarism checker. You gotta write it yourself. And uh, then you're gonna come back and talk to me about it. I think that would be fair under the circumstances because this is that important. I'm, I have to account for all of you who summon, and I'm still looking for folks that it didn't appear. So you, I'm not picking on you. I'm sorry that you got a little bit of a, attention in this respect, but the attention is how serious we view this whole aspect of jury service and participation in the process so we can get a fair, fair juror and a, and a lawful trial as to both sides. So I'm not trying to, to, to make it other than an exercise in that. So do you understand that? Yes. Okay, all right. So what I'm gonna do is, today is the 12th. You need to have it written and submitted to me by the, by the 3rd of February to my county email address, ural.glanville at fultoncountyga.gov. I'll have that in order. You won't, you won't have to. I, I just mark in my calendar. Yeah. Yes, sir. Okay. okay. And then, um,